my channel. It's your girl Sean, and I'm back for another video. Today I'm going to be doing another sort of couch conversation with you guys. It's been a while since I've done one of these types of videos, and there's a lot that I want to talk to you guys about. There's two situations in particular. One is about hashtag Visa Bay. I'm going to explain what that is if you guys haven't heard of that situation. And the other one is actually about this post my husband just sent me about this man who took his date to P.F. Chang's uh, for dinner. And at the end of dinner, she asked him if he would order two to-go plates for her kids. And so, mm, <laughs> I'm going to give you my two cents on all that uh, coming up right now. So, if you're brand new to my channel and you love uh, just people talking about random topics, you'll love my channel. I'm going to be doing a lot more of that uh, coming up this year and moving forward on my channel. Just talking about uh, things that are going on in the world today, more um, frequent, uh, current events and things like that. So, you definitely want to subscribe. And if you're already a subscriber, be sure to become a part of the notification gang. Gang, gang, gang. <laughs> and be sure to hit that little bell, which is right next to the subscribe button. That way, you'll never miss an upload from your girl. Let's talk about Visa Bay. So in case you guys are unfamiliar, there is this YouTuber. Her name is RLT, and she also has an amazing looking Instagram account. And on her Instagram, she is seen um, really incredibly fashionable. I love her fashion. She's wearing a lot of high-end designer pieces, lots of designer bags, Gucci, Fendi, Prada, Chanel, you name it. Very high-end. A lot of that, you know, that lifestyle type um, Instagram page where, you know, people just are showing their extravagant life. Well, um, recently she made this video. Uh, the video was called something along the lines of I have a month left or something. And at first, with a name like I have a month left, you think, oh, I have a, a month left to live. So I'm thinking that it's really serious. So if you actually have the patience to sit through the 30-minute video, she goes on to talk about how she has one uh, month left to remain in London. And if she doesn't come up with $2,300, she's going to be deported back to her homeland of Zimbabwe. And she's clearly like devastated by this. She has a month to raise this money. She's crying in the video. Honestly, it seems so genuine to me. I, I found out about this through the hashtag. So I'd never seen the young lady before, but you know, I was just like, oh my gosh, like we need to give her some money. <laughs> so the young lady goes on to talk about, you know, the pressure, the pressure that social media has put on people and it's too much for her and how painful it is when she sees people in her comment section saying things like they wish they had her life and if they only knew Knew what kind of life she really had. A lot of the things that she, she was showcasing in her videos, like the clothes, the handbags, the shoes, and all that, they were actually borrowed items from her friends. Her mission was to try to get sponsorships and to try to make, you know, YouTube and Instagram a career for herself. And that she wanted to sort of sell the idea of luxury so that luxury companies would send her things and she would get more, you know, the bigger, higher end opportunities, like to possibly work with Chanel and work with Louis Vuitton and Fit and Prada and all the brands that she was featuring on her Instagram and all of that. So she ended up starting a GoFundMe with the goal of reaching $2,300. That was the money that she needed to get her, I guess, citizenship papers to stay in London. Uh, the GoFundMe was barely up before she actually surpassed. She eclipsed that goal. And I believe at last count, she had over $4,000. So I'm thinking, well, that's great. The young lady can stay and all of that. But the backlash that she received was really a lot to me. I've seen so many videos, hashtag Visa Bay, where they're just dragging the young lady for portraying a certain lifestyle. And don't get me wrong, there are some valid points. You know, she's a grown woman. Uh, apparently, she had known for years. She had known since she'd come to this country that she had to get her citizenship paper by a certain point, by a certain time. And to wait until she had a month left, that wasn't necessarily the most responsible decision that she's made. But who hasn't made irresponsible decisions in their early 20s? Like, don't get me, it's a big deal. I'm not minimizing or trivializing that aspect of it. But when somebody reaches out for help, the way we treat them to me is alarming. It's like when somebody actually goes through and kills themselves, the first thing people say is, oh, I wish I knew. Oh, if, if only they had reached out for help. If only they had told people what was going on. If only everybody has all this sympathy once somebody has already ended their life. Now, this young lady in her video, she talks about thinking about ending it all. So wh why would you drag a person like that who you already know her mental state is fragile? 
It's like we have just become so immersed in this mean girls culture where we just love to drag people. What about when a, a person that looks like you actually needs some help? I've seen a lot of that's what she gets and you know, if it was me, I would do this and if it was me, I would never. You, you don't know what you would never do until you actually are put in that position where you have to. I don't think that she would go through the humiliation of herself, her family, her friends and all of that to on a public public stage have to declare I don't have the money and I need I need help so badly she said in the video even if it's just one dollar I don't think she would go through all of that humiliation for twenty three hundred dollars if she did she sold herself way too cheap who wants to embarrass themselves and beg for the money people saying stuff like she's gonna use the money to buy a handbag really so she can rock the handbag in Zimbabwe because that's where she would be going I don't know I just feel like I don't want people to just speak about unity. I want you to actually have to put your money where your mouth is. I want you to actually care. We, we always want to drag somebody. This whole idea of shading people and being mean and coming up with all these snappy comments and all, like we're no better than the whole neck rolling, you know, finger snapping the days of the 90s. We just call it a different name. Now we call it shade, like it's cooler now. It wasn't cool then and it's not cool now. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's me, okay? Maybe because I'm a life coach and when I see somebody who is clearly in need of help, seeing people kick somebody who is already down, it bothers me. You know what I'm saying? It bothers me. You know that her mental state is fragile. Is this the person that you want to drag? So what will you do if she takes your comments to heart? What will you do if all the ridicule that you've heaped upon her is too much for her? What will you say then? Oh, I didn't know it was that bad. Yes, you did. She told you it was that bad. It's like we don't we don't think about what other people are going through. And most of the people who are talking the most smack probably didn't give the girl a dime. You don't even know what she you haven't even given her a chance to see what she would do with the money. We just ran off on the plug twice. I don't know. So that's how I feel about the Visa Bay situation. Now I'm gonna jump into this P.F. Chang situation. So my husband just sent this to me. And um, it was, I think from like Shade Room or something like that. He has screenshotted it because he knows I like the dating stuff because you guys know I'm a dating coach as well. So the thing said that the guy, he was saying that the girl that he took out on a date, they had a great time and everything. Um, you know, they ordered their food, had a great time. The exchange was lovely, you know, all that and all that. <laughs> but at the end of it, she asked him to order two additional dinners, two to-go dinners, not for them. Oh no, these are for her children. And he also goes on to say that once he refused and was like, I, don't, I haven't even met these children, like, you know, basically this is a brand new relationship. She had an attitude for the rest of the evening. He wants to know, did he overreact or was she asking for too much? I texted my husband back. I was like, did she want, was she looking for love or dinner? Because you can't assume a man who is not the provider for these children to all of a sudden start to provide. Like it's, it's I mean, I don't know. I just think it's incredibly rude and like insensitive to expect that somebody is gonna pay for you and your family. Like, why would he ever ask you out again? Um, if you guys really needed a meal or all that, you should have took your to-go box, your to-go plate, and packed that up and split that with your kids, however you had to do it, or you get some, you know, whatever you gotta do to feed your children. But to think that somebody who you just met is all of a sudden gonna take on the financial responsibility of caring for these kids, even though I know it's just dinner. Well, if you just got together, it's dinner today, and then it might be this just child needs glasses and this child needs books for school. And I just feel like it's a lot to expect somebody to all of a sudden um, have to provide for your children in any way. Like even if at some point the relationship progressed to the point where you guys were in a serious relationship, it's still up to him to decide to what degree he would provide for those kids who are not biologically his. But to expect that on a first date is wrong. And that might be why she probably goes through a series of dates. It's clear to me that that woman was using him. And it's sad though, because it really makes her look bad. It could have been a beautiful thing. You could have let the relationship blossom organically and see where it would go. 
but to force the issue, it makes it clear to him that, okay, clearly you want somebody to help you with the, with caring for these kids. Like, what about me? Like, not all men are against dating women with children, but sometimes they're against the idea of you expecting them to come in and be the daddy to those children when they're not. Now, they'll come in to be a great stepdad and all that, but they also want to know that the child's actual father is in their lives and that you, as their actual mother, it's like well providing for those children. Nobody wants to be the just add water solution to your problems. I actually did a video a couple of weeks ago on like first date do's and don'ts. I'll link that video on the screen and also below so you guys can check it out. But this is definitely one of them. If you are a single mother, you don't want to let a guy that you're just now dating feel like you are looking for a father for your children. At least not this soon on in a relationship. You don't even know if he cares for you yet. Much less you trying to pawn off some kids that aren't even his on him. Like, let's see where this goes. Let's see what kind of person he is before you just start digging in his wallet and making sure that he's got enough money for dinner for everyone. Like, it's, a, it's way too soon. You have to be very careful of who you allow in your children's life, who you allow into your life. And as a single parent, you're looking for the complete package, not just somebody who can provide for you financially and provide for your children financially, but what else can he give? I feel like she really reduced him to this one-dimensional thing by being like, okay, just provide for us. You didn't, she didn't even get a chance to get to know the guy yet. I think it's definitely jumping the gun and it's moving way too quickly. It is definitely a first date no-no. It's a first date heck to the na-na-nah. <laughs> anyway, that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to thumbs up. If you'd like to hear more couch conversations, if you have more topics that you want me to discuss, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this one. I love you guys and I'll see you all in the next video. Till next time. Later divas and dudes. Jesus, honey.